Hi guys, this is Tash, the Stock Girl Stitcher. I hope you're all doing well. I am fantastic. <laughs> um, I just got back from my honeymoon, which was a month in Europe, and it was amazing and wonderful and hot. <laughs> um, and now I'm home and back in Canberra, and it's winter and I'm cold, <laughs> and I have to start work tomorrow. <laughs> um, so <sighs> I'm feeling good. I'm really tired. Um, I got back on. Wednesday night, Thursday night, really late at 11 p.m. and I haven't done anything since I got home. Basically Friday I slept, Saturday I went to Sydney for an embroidery class which I'll tell you a little bit about and now it's Sunday and I need to clean the house and do some washing and I need to make this video so I can put all this stuff away. Um, <laughs> yeah so on my table here it's basically covered in new acquisitions. Um, which is crazy. Uh, some of it is parcels and some of it I bought over in Europe. I visited a few shops. I've got some fun stuff. I've got some progress. I have a new start. I don't have a finish. So let's just get to it. I'm going to start with purchases, I think. So while I was away, I actually got a few parcels in the mail. Um, uh, I'll start with these. I got Fabric of the Month. This is Pele's Fire by Under the Sea Fabrics. I heard some people don't like the crackling. I heard some people really like the crackling. I'm gonna get it out and show you. Um, this is Under the Sea Fabrics Fabric of the Month. I always get Belfast 32 count. This is called Pele's Fire. The color you're seeing is perfect. It's orange and yellow and pink. And it's bright and bizarre and I have no, <laughs> it's amazing. I have no idea what I'll do with it. But it's, it looks cool, doesn't it? Um, this morning I wrote to Leslie to cancel my fabric of the month and I'm sad about that. I've, I've loved her fabrics. Um, one of the whips I'm going to show you is on her fabric, but God, it smells so good. Um, but you know, we just had an expensive honeymoon and an expensive wedding and I'm just feeling the need to save some money and stop spending money. So I cancelled my, this fabric of the month. Um, the other fabric of the month I'm in... I haven't cancelled and that's because it's prepaid so I'm already I'm already paid up till the end of the year so I'm not going to cancel I'm just gonna keep getting it um, and that one is X2 designs uh, you can find X2 design on Etsy she does beautiful fabric and threads um, with your fabric of the month you always get a free thread a free thread and a free pattern from vintage tulip design this is called summer looks like that and there's the thread, and of course, it's in the same colours as the pattern, which is brown, yellow, and green. So, it's pretty. And the fabric she sent us is this. I always get 46 count Bergen linen um, in a fat quarter, and the colour is menth syrup. And there it is, like that. You know, you're not seeing it very well because there's light coming through there that, that's a bit better it's called menth syrup it's obviously green with like slightly yellowish green uh mottling on it very pretty i was actually thinking this would work for um birds to the bowels what do you think it would i'm desperate to stitch that pattern i love it i love it i have so <laughs> i have so many um potential new starts planned that i could have a start every week for the next year Literally, that's how many I have planned. Um, they're not all kitted, of course, but I want to stitch everything. How do you, how do you not stitch all the things? I want to stitch all the things. <laughs> so that's the X2 Designs fabric of the month. And that was prepaid when I bought it. So I'm paid till, I think till the end of the year. So I'm just going to keep getting it. Okay. Um... I made an order with 123 Stitch before I went away. So I've got some kits, some things I'm about to show you are from 123 Stitch and some are from eBay wins. Um, and some of them are like pretty old, like a few months old. And some of them aren't old. But nevertheless, they all arrived just before I left or when I left. So I'll show you. I got one more stitch by Little House Needleworks. Little House Needleworks is not my style, generally. Um, they're really cute. I just, I don't like stitching houses for one thing, they're too big and boring. And I just, 
I don't like the sort of country style stuff. But this is too cute. Just one more stitch. That's exactly how I feel every night. Sitting up, <laughs> stitching while everyone else is already in bed. So I like that. And when you buy this, it's really expensive on, on one, two, three stitch, and that's because it comes with the threads. So there's that. I jumped on the bandwagon and got the Martha Agnes sampler roll. Oh gosh, glare. It looks like that. I'll take it out. It says, my time is past my time is swiftly passing by. My day of death is drawing nigh. These useful hands I now employ, worms of dust will still destroy. So I like that. I like um you know, after I'm dead, this thing I made will still be around, but it'll soon get destroyed as well. I like that. I can't take it out. It's too hard to take out, so that's it. Stacey Nash, this is Martha Agnes sampler roll. So yeah, um, Jessie Marie is stitching this. I think Michelle Garrett was stitching this. I've seen quite a few people stitching this recently and I like it too. Um, I've started sort of, sort of collecting little by little designs. I had quite a few already, but these three came recently. I might have shown you one or two of them before. I got the fishing lady, which for some reason I love, even though there's a hell of a lot of stitching in that grass, that grass down there. I think it's cool. I got the tail of this and that sampler, um, which I love. It's kind of like that Two Angry Birds Shakespeare's Peddler one, the birds that are having a fight. Uh, it says, these birds perched on flowering vine, this side and that, as all may see, are not on speaking terms, you see, but this one stole away while that slept at break of day. Ate up the early worm that day. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's pretty. Um, the Black Heart Sampler by C. Daly Bradford. Oh, by Little by Little. Um, I think this is really pretty. It only uses a few colours. The picture is definitely doesn't do that justice. It's really pretty. And that, that would be super fast to stitch, so I should do that soon, maybe. Perhaps. Uh, yes, so I like those. I'm looking out for more Little by Little. If anyone has any <laughs> that they don't want, let me know and I will negotiate. Um, I got The Stitcher by Homespun Elegance. There it is. I saw um, Dina from Half Stitch Cross Stitch. She stitched this last year, I think. And I think it's beautiful. And I am going to stitch it too. One day. Um, I got this one. I've been looking for this one for a while. It's called the Sampler Sampler, and as you can see, there are a bunch of little samplers all in one sampler. I feel like it's not focusing. There you go. I think that's a bit better. That's the Sampler Sampler by, by Bright Needle. Um, I also managed to get a hold of, I don't know if people remember these, about 10 years ago, these were quite popular because they'd just gone out of print and they were all these cottages by Elizabeth's Designs. So I have the blue, bluebird cottage, bluebird cottage, and I don't know how well you can see the picture. There are lots of specialty stitches in these. They're very, very cute and pretty. Um, climbing rose cottage. Um, gardener's cottage. Woodland cottage. And everybody's favourite, beekeeping cottage, bee, beekeeper's cottage. That's so pretty with all their specialty stitches. I'm not into this bee thing. I, everyone's into bees at the moment and I don't really get it. <laughs> um, I don't have a problem with bees, of course, but I just don't get it. Um, sampler name tag by Sharon Cohen. I ordered this so long ago on eBay and it finally arrived. Um, I get... A lot of my eBay purchases sent to my dad's work address in the US. He goes over there about once every month or two. And I ordered this like in December or January and he finally brought it back. So I'm very pleased. So next time I go to a retreat, I might make this up and put my name on it. Although now my name is going to be Kiermaier, Tash Kiermaier. How do you fit Kiermaier on any of these? K-I-E-R-M-A-I-E, -E -E nine letters. Um, yeah. Um, I'm... I may already have this, I think I might, but it came with something. I think it came with this. So, and it was very cheap, so I bought it anyway. The Sampler Slipper by Trisha Nguyen of Thistle Threads. I 
think that's gorgeous. Love it. Um, you can buy the form to make this slipper up from her website, and I'm actually going to do that because I have a few other slippers of hers. Um, I got this one from 123 Stitch, Mexican Garden from Queenstown Sampler Designs. I'm kind of obsessed with Mexican samplers at the moment, so because they're bright and colourful and easy and adorable. I think it's very sweet. Um, Maxim and Zoya by Plum Street Samplers. Um, someone else, someone recently just finished this or has nearly finished it and I love it. It's gorgeous. I also got this whole sort of bundle of threads. Where are they? Here. They're all classic colour works. I'm sure they're for something because I remember ordering Zach Black for something specific. All of these I'm pretty sure that I, they were ordered for a project. I have no idea what project, but they're all here. <laughs> um, I just have to identify what project they go with. Um, all Creatures Stitched in Small by Laurie Markov of La Vida Designs. Uh, this is a book, it's got a few designs in it. It has that one on the front. It has all these ones on the back. And it was on clearance, so it was quite cheap, but I really love this elephant. And I quite like this little tiger. <laughs> and that's very sweet too, isn't it? Um, but yeah. I think it was cute. It was pretty cheap. I love elephants. I love this guy. So I might... One day. One day I'll do that. Um, I made an order from Teresa, Kitten Stitcher. Hi Teresa. She doesn't watch my videos, but I'm in love with her. I love everything she does. So I, I ordered from her. I ordered Mary Bait. $17.96. Um, and I think this is just beautiful. She has this on the wall in her office if you saw that recent video of her. She has the original sample on her wall. The border is so beautiful, so gorgeous. Um, I need to get this up. And the verse, the reason I like this is because I like the verse. It's about, um, it's about learning and education and how important that is to the development of a person. The human soul without education is like marble in the quarry, which though none of its inherent beauty, which like marble in the quarry which shows none of its inherent beauties until the skill of the polisher feathers out the colors makes the surface shinier and discovers every ornamental cloud spot and vein that runs through the body of it education after the same manner often when it works upon the mind draws out to view every latent virtue and perfection which without such helps are never able to make their appearance isn't that nice Keep such company as you may improve or that may improve you. And if you or your companions cannot make one another better, rather leave than grow worse by them. Choose your friends carefully. Um, Mary Bate, or I think Teresa says Mary Beatty. I'm not sure. Mary Bate, her work in the Year of Our Lord, 1796. And I love that. Love it. Um, there are, I've got quite a lot of Shakespeare Peddler now. There are a few more that I really want, but they weren't on her website. I really want um, the, Weary, the Weary World Rejoices, which is a Christmas one, an original design of hers. Um, I really want... Oh, I can't think what else. There's a couple of others of hers. Oh, the, um, the Tale of Two Angry Birds. Um, but they weren't on her website. So I'm assuming... I hope she will reproduce those at some point, because I love her stuff. So, oh... Also from Teresa, I got one of her fabrics. This is 40 count flea market brass. Um, she always, she puts in a little note about the fabric, about the fact that it's not colour fast. She dyes it with commercial and natural dyes and it's meant to look grotty and grimy and, which it does. It looks stained and gr grotty and I love it. It's super cool. Super cool. It's, um, it's quite... Yeah, you're seeing it right. It's quite yellowy. Golden yellow. Brass coloured, maybe. Um, again, no idea. No plans yet. Maybe this. Don't know. I'd have to do a floss toss. Um, but yeah, so cool. I want more of her fabric, of course. Very nice. Um, and I also ordered some of these button bags of hers. You know, she sells these. It's basically a handful of antique buttons um, from her antique button stash. And it's quite an sorry. There's quite an assortment in there. There's big ones, there's small ones. I got three packs. This one has lots of big ones in it. 
and then one of them had opened up in the in the box. So look at that crown one, isn't that cool? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm really happy with those. Um again, I don't know what I'll use them for, but they'll come in handy when I'm doing finishing or you can just stick a button, like just stick a button on a finished sampler when you make it. I think it's nice. Sorry, I'm kind of rambling. I'm still very jet lagged. I'm really tired. And I just, I'm making this video, look, I have a lot more to tell you about my trip. I went to two sampler museums. I met a lady at one of them who works for the Antique Pattern Library and she was very interesting and I want to tell you about her. But honestly, what I need to do today is just show you all the stash I bought so I can put it away because I'm feeling like the whole house is chaos and I need to clean up a bit before work starts back. So that's why this video is here. Okay, focus. So. Let's talk about purchases I made while I was in Europe because that's all the stash I got before or during or while I was at Europe. That's all the mail that came to my house. Um, so when I was in Europe, yeah, the first place I thought, bought something was the v and Museum. v and Museum saw some amazing things. I will show you some pictures at some point. They're up on my Instagram anyway. I saw the original book of, book of hours I think it's called. And where the original tiny little picture, it's about this big, of Mermaid's Folly. <laughs> it's so cool. I, I was just walking past the books and it was open on this page. And there it was right at the bottom of the page. I was, I nearly screamed. It was so funny. Um, I got a little pair of scissors. Merchant and Mills baby bow scissors. I don't know why these were in the v and um, But I got them anyway. Because <laughs> they were cool. The v and yeah, just like that. They're really like old fashioned looking. The v &A was amazing. If you have a chance to go, you should go. Um, they had tapestries and they had um, carpets and they had these amazing Indian chintzes and there's so much inspiration there. It's amazing. I, it's the kind of place where you could spend two weeks, eight hours a day, two weeks and not see everything. Um, amazing. I didn't see any needlework there, but well. Nothing like stitching or samples or anything. Um, I went to I went to the Royal School of Needlework shop. Um, if you don't know, the Royal School of Needlework is actually at Hampton Court Palace, which was Henry VIII's old palace. Um, so I went there. I met Lindsay Pink Stitcher. Hi, Lindsay. Um, we met up. It was amazing to meet a floss tuber. <laughs> um, another floss tuber. I know a few floss tubers now. It's a great thing about our community that we can make new friends and meet people and from all over the world and there I am in the middle of England and I'm meeting someone that I've chatted to and watched her videos for a year a year and a half now um, but I was very good there I wanted to buy a lot of things they had amazing black work um, Union Union Jack I loved that but the kit it was only a kit and it was 30 pounds and I was like ooh, that's like 50 Australian dollars but for just, you know, a bit of linen, <laughs> three colours of thread, and the pattern. I was like, yeah, I don't think I can justify that. There was a small canvas work kit. I guess it would have ended up about this big. Just with maybe nine patch sort of square with different patterns in it. And I really liked that. And it was rainbow colours. But again, it was the same price and I didn't want to spend it. What I did buy was an awl. Or, you know, people use this like a laying tool or a stiletto needle or something. Um, but yeah. It's very pretty. I've never had one of these and I, I don't know, I couldn't resist. I wanted to buy something to be to say like yes I've been there and I bought something. So there we go. Bought something. <laughs> and this was only like, it was like nine pounds I think. So yeah, happy with that. I went to Liberty in London. That store is amazing. I want to furnish my life with Liberty. like. I want all my home decor, my sofas, my furniture in my house, my bedspreads, my uh, cups, mugs, and you know plates in the kitchen. Everything could come from that store. Everything there is amazing. I bought some cool stuff though. I bought a pin cushion. Remember, I was saying I need a pin cushion. Um, the pin cushion when I was making needle. Sorry. Ah, words are so hard. When I was making those project bags. I was, you know, pinning things together and then as I'm sewing, I'm taking the pins out and I go, what do I do with the pin when I take it out? I can't, don't really have two hands free to stick it back in the, like, you know, the round pinwheel. 
I need a pincushion. So of course I'm going to make one, but in the meantime, I bought this little apple pincushion. It's very cute. I'm going to take it out because I'm going to use it, so I'll just take it out of the box. It's really pretty. Really pretty. I love these fabrics. They're, of course, they're all Liberty fabrics. Um, yeah, love that. Um, the other thing I bought was this. It is a box. And when you open it like this, it opens up like so. Ta-da! Uh, there we go. And it's like a little sewing kit. So tape measure, scissors, uh, an unpicker, uh, a thimble is back here. Sorry. Then in the middle I've got some threads, a threader, some buttons here, some pins in the top. I just think it's so cool and pretty. I actually have a pattern to make one of these up, uh, like a template to make it. So I just cover it with fabric or cross stitching or something and make it up. I love this. I love this fabric. I think it's really pretty. It matches that panel on here. Um, they had it in all of these fabrics. I nearly got this one. I still don't know why I didn't. This is like a peacock print. Um, but yeah, I think that's I think that's super cool. I love these. I'm really happy with these. Um, this was five pound. This was twenty pound. I think that's very reasonable. So yeah, happy with those. The other thing I got from Liberty was some fabric to make more project bags. Oh, come here. So um, my mum has Liberty fabrics in her shop, and she said to me, "Don't buy any fabrics when you go to Liberty." Um, but I saw fabrics there that she definitely doesn't have in her shop. If you go there, go to the floor with the haberdashery and the fabrics. It's amazing. There are so many fabrics and they're all beautiful. Um, but I showed mum these fabrics and I, she said she doesn't think she has any of them in her shop. So, yay. Um, so, I'll just, I'm not opening these all up, but I'll just show you what. They're all tied up. So, these are all remnants. They were selling um, end of the bolt remnants. They're about, they're, apparently they're all about a metre fabric. So, um... And they were £13 each, I think. So there's about, like, I've got, I don't know. Anyway, this is the first one. It's pretty, it's pretty cool. Uh, this one is very pretty. They're all tied up with this, so that's not part of the fabric. That's pretty. I'm going to say pretty a lot. There you go. I love this, this big, crazy rose. There it is. It's huge. Um, the colours are really subtle and pastel -y. Uh This is strange, and at first I didn't like it, but from far away it looks like a cool mess, but when you get close you realise it's actually like faceted jewels, like cut jewels. Um, I like it for better from far away, I think it looks pretty cool. Yeah. Uh, this, I, I, I... You know, the next two... I really just got because I thought they make good insides for bags. But I think this is really interesting print. And this, uh, I don't know why I got it, just because it went well. <laughs> so there's the selection. I think any of these four would make a good combination of bags. So, yep. And those two don't really go with the others, but I still like them. That was fun. It was really fun. I saw... I actually saw a girl walking down the street wearing a dress, obviously homemade dress from this fabric, and it was just like a, a shift dress. It's so gorgeous. I could dress my whole life in Liberty. You know, I went there, there are handbags, I fell in love with this handbag, but it was 500 pounds, so I don't have that kind of budget. And scarves, I was like, oh, I'll buy my mama silk scarf. Nope, 200 pounds. I don't love her that much. I mean, I do, but I can't afford to love her that much. <laughs> um, yeah. That shop is like a candy store for your eyeballs. It's amazing. Everything is incredible. Um, so when I was in Cambridge, I went to the Fitzwilliam Sample Museum. And that was incredible. It was amazing. It was uh, uh, just overwhelming to see so many beautiful samplers. Tiny, intricate, detailed samplers that are hundreds of years old. It was just amazing. I got this book, Sampled Lives, samplers from the Fitzwilliam Museum. 
you look on my Instagram, I did take a lot of photos of the samplers and I love this one. I'm going to, this is um, a re reproduced by the Scarlet Letter Audio Sampler and I'm going to buy it. Love it. Um, there were some darnings. Oh, this one as well. That's another reproduction that has been made that I'm going to get. They, those two were some of my favourites. There were some darning samplers that were really intricate. So fine. Like every piece of linen there. They, they looked like they were all tiny counts, like 50 count or 60 count. They were, you know, I couldn't see close enough to like put a, um, a ruler up to it and count count the number of threads. But they were amazing. These white work, there's a lot of white work there. They were all overwhelming. So stunning. Um, it was absolutely worth a visit. If you go to Cambridge, you must, you must go and see this. I love these um, spot samplers. This really reminds me of um, the Celtic sampler I'm stitching. You know, all these motifs that are made up of queen stitches. They even, it even looks like the same sort of colours as my Celtic sampler. Um, the, the Celtic sampler I'm talking about is Wallace and Robertson, a two-part Celtic sampler by Darlene Osteen of The Needles Prose. Um, yeah. And the other thing that shocked me when I was there was that I saw the original Elizabeth Creasy. And if you've been keeping up, I'm stitching Elizabeth Creasy. So there's a detail from Elizabeth Creasy. Amazing, right? So I've done that top line of words there and I'm working. I've done some of this. I'm just working on this part in here. And that's all I've done. Um, that's the whole thing here. So I have a long way to go. A lot of that still to go, a lot of white work. This book has like three pages of information about Elizabeth Creasy and about, it's all about, you know, some, how the samplers evolved, what kind of styles we saw, the schools they know of, everything. This book is fantastic. I think it was, yeah, it was 20 pounds for the book. But it's so worth it. I'm really, there's so much to read in here. I'm looking forward to a good read there. Um, all over Europe, I was able to pick up some like cards, postcards, um, pretty things um, to send to people. So I have a lot of little, you know, when I do gives, giveaways or something, I have some cards with embroidery on them or tapestries or paintings. So I got a lot of stuff like that, which was really good. And that's really good also because it was super cheap. <laughs> when we got to Paris, I went to two uh, cross-stitching shops that Elena told us about. Remember Elena B went to Paris and she went to three cross-stitching shops. The third one I didn't get to go to. The third one is only open from Wednesday to Friday between between 1 and 7 or 1 and 5. So, I mean, what? Who can afford to... That's amazing that she can sustain a business on 12 hours a week. 18 hours a week. Um, but I, unfortunately, was not in Paris on those days of the week at any point, so I didn't get to go. But I did go to Les Bonheurs de Dame. Les... Uh-oh. That's about to fall. Les Bonheurs des Dames. I bought quite a lot. This one. I actually went when I first got to Paris and then when we were leaving on our last day, we had to take the train from Paris to London to catch our plane. And Tim and I went back to this shop. So I went there twice and bought quite a few things. I knew they had a few of these little permanent kits that I like to stitch, so I got a few more. There's a lady with an umbrella. A man buying a Christmas tree. Um, it looks like a pier in the snow. Um, a fishing boat. And this other one that I started. It's like a horse. But I'm having a problem with this because I'm running out of thread. It, I, it didn't give me enough thread and I'm not sure if it's because I used two strands and I should have used one. I'm going to check right now. Cross stitch. Yeah, the cross stitch should be done in one strand. And I did two. Whoops. So that explains why I ran out of thread. <laughs> um, yeah, so I'm actually going to unpick this anyway. I'm so unhappy with the the messiness of the stitches and obviously it's so messy because I did two strands instead of one. Gosh, my camera's just not focusing today. Um, yeah, anyway, that's what I did. Not much. Um, 
when I was at Saju, the other shop I went to was Saju. I got this, um, one of these floss organizers. Isn't that pretty? Anyway, that's a little spoiler for the rest of my Saju stash. Um, so, yeah. So I got those little kits, which I'm super happy about. So there's one new start, was that little permanent kit. Um, I bought this. It's a Nimue, and if you know um, that pattern with those little gnomes carrying the apples, um, a few people have done that. Michelle, the Australian Michelle in Sydney, I can't remember her channel name. She, Michelle G and Michelle, the Australian Michelle, they do videos together sometimes. Anyway, I love him, I've loved him for a long time. It's a kit, and it comes with, you know, this sort of whisper thread um, that you can use for his beard. I love this. I can't wait to stitch it. I love a lot of Nimue designs and I've wanted to stitch a lot of them so I was pleased to get that. It was quite, you know, that was 31 euro which is 45 Australian dollars. That was not cheap. Um, these things weren't cheap either but I like them. They do a lot of these bags and bags with embroidery on them. They have big bags, they have small bags, they have um, scissor fobs and things like that. But this is really cool because the bag is pre-made like that. Um, and you just stitch on the top part there. So I bought this and I thought it was pretty cool. Then I got it back to the hotel room and the colours they gave me don't match the colours here. The symbols on the colour chart, the symbols on the colours she gave me don't match the symbols on the chart. So I don't know. I don't, something obviously went wrong there. Um, but I thought, you know what, I could go and argue with her.